we're going to talk about leakage flux in a magnetic circuit. The way a lot of magnetic circuits are put together is that uh, we want it to be a toroidal shape or a, um, a square shape or, or something like that in order for our, uh, our uh, useful flux to be constrained within a, um, a shape. So, for example, if we were to make a toroidal shaped core of iron, say, then our flux would be contained all the way inside this iron. So here's the outer flux paths. And we remember that uh, magnetic flux has a direction and it is continuous and it runs a full uh, circle. And this would be my mean path length L. And then this, uh, this would be the inner uh, path of the flux. And everything is in entirely inside the material. So this is a useful shape because we are going to then um, energize it by, by um, wrapping some coils along here and those coils have current running through them. Uh, and the, the flux is entirely contained. And that's good because there is no leakage. This, this uh, diagram that I'm showing here is no leakage. And when I'm talking about leakage, I'm talking about leakage flux. The, the uh, magnetic lines of flux leaking outside of the core. So all of these flux lines are yes inside the core, core and everything's really good. But the problem with this is that how do you make this toroidal shaped object and then wind your windings through it, around it? You would have to, for you would have to sort of, uh, sew those in. You would have to um, take your your copper coil of or your uh, current carrying conductor and you would have to put it through the hole and then up and around the back and then back through the hole again, right? And around the back and back through the hole again, around the back, back through the hole again. You get what I'm saying and around the back. And that would cost a fortune. Sure, there's no leakage, but it would cost a fortune. Very, very nice quality, great. But <clears throat> that it, it costs so much to do that. Well, how do we make machinery that is going to weave like that, right? That would be very, very expensive machinery. <clears throat> What's much cheaper is if I take a rectangle shape and I have a piece of iron like this, <clears throat> then I can easily make <clears throat> a piece of equipment that's going to wrap around <clears throat> this core. And you can think about all the ways to do that. <clears throat> maybe you hold the wire with a piece of equipment. Maybe you hold the wire like this and maybe you spin the core um, to wrap that around. But you know, it would be like wrapping ribbon around a spool. We know how to make instrumentation to do that, which would be much cheaper than actually sewing it around uh, a circular toroid shape. So this would cost much less to make. And in this case, I have just this little rectangle here. And if I were to look at the flux that is induced in this rectangle, it'll sit all inside that core for sure. But we know for transformers, et cetera, we need uh, a shape like this. We need, uh, we need to magnify these magnetic flux lines and we want to keep them all inside a magnetic core. So the problem with this one is that all of this flux is, is on the outside, okay? Most of this flux is, and there's just as much flux on the outside as there is on the inside. So we um, try to get from this rectangular core as close as we can, as close as we can to this shape of this toroid in order to keep some of those flux lines inside a magnetic circuit. So what we do then, let me just clean this up a little bit. What we do then is we take that, we take that rectangle, we take that rectangle and we add something to it up here. And if we add to that rectangle, here we go. 
made like an Escher drawing here. If we add to this rectangle, oops. Oh boy, let me just do this properly. I can't leave it like that. There we go. Then I hope to induce or attract with my permeability, with my permeable circuit, I hope to attract those flux lines through this core. So I, I'm hoping to attract it all into the core, just like over here that I liked. However, in reality, that's not quite as good as a toroid. Uh, wrapping a coil down here at the bottom is actually not as good as a toroid. And the reason it's not as good as a toroid is because some of it does leak out. So you do, yes, have your flux lines going through the whole magnetic circuit like you intended. There's a mean path length in the middle. There's a long length and there's a short length. But then there are also other ones that are coming out like this. And we're losing some of them. And as you're probably guessing, that's what the leakage flux is. It's the one that we're it's the ones that we're losing. So we are losing these flux lines. And it's leakage. So there's a bit of magnetism outside of this di this design, whereas the full toroidal design would not have any any leakage at all. Okay, so uh, that's that's the um, that's the reality of of this shape. The reality of this shape is you lose a little bit of flux. Um, the flux that is inside is called useful flux. And the shape and the flux that came out is called leakage flux. All right. And um, what we need to know is the relationship between the two. So we have a little definition here that's important to know. And it's called the leakage factor. And the leakage factor is something we should be able to compute for any circuit. The leakage factor is a new little equation for you. And it just means total flux. Oops. Just means total flux over the useful flux. So that would be flux over flux. Flux is a count, right? Uh, and uh, and it's over account, which means it's a unitless demand. It's a unitless um, factor. And all it defines, all it defines is um, the amount of useful flux. Uh, the the leakage factor, of course, we want the useful flux to be as high as possible compared to the total. And it's on the denominator, so we want the leakage factor to be as small as possible. And the leakage factor is a uh, experimentally determined, well, first mathematically determined by the design and then experimentally confirmed uh, factor that is published for the magnetic circuit. And you want that to be as small as possible. Of course, it's unitless because it is flux over flux. So most practical magnetic circuits are going to have leakage of the total flux. The amount of that leakage is defined by the leakage factor. 